Hey, what's happening everybody? Bobby Spellman here for another exciting episode of... In this episode, we're going to be discussing the technique of double-tonguing on the trumpet. Now, for those of you new to the double-tonguing game, I know what you're thinking. But Bob, I only have but one tongue with which to tongue. Well, do not despair, because the art of double-tonguing really involves being able to alternate between two different parts of your tongue to allow for a faster articulation. You have the tip of your tongue, or the ta sound, and the back of your tongue, the ka sound. By alternating between ta and ka, you'll find you will be able to more quickly articulate certain rhythmic phrases, and it'll uh, apply to many different styles of music and different things that you might be able to do on the trumpet. So, without further ado, let's get into how to practice this technique and different ways that you can use it. You'll already be familiar with the single-tonguing technique, where you use the tip of your tongue against the part of your mouth where your teeth meet the roof of your mouth to start a new note or separate an airstream with the ta sound. However, the big trick in learning to double tongue is to really practice articulating those notes with the ka part of your tongue in order to be able to quickly alternate between ta, ka, ta, ka and to create a more of a fast rhythmic approach. Now the first step in this is really to practice trying to get as clean and clear an articulation with the ka part as you will with the ta part. So let's start with that. At first, you're just going to want to check out what it feels like to start the air with that ka sound. So you could start off without the trumpet and just practice just to get a feel for just starting that little burst of air with the back of your tongue. As you do it, you can then add the trumpet and really try to just articulate notes using that syllable. As with many beginning trumpet techniques, you may have to overdo it at first just to get a feel for it. But as you go, you can refine that sound and really try to get it to be as clear and articulate as your, as your single tonguing approach with the front of your mouth, ta ta ta. As you go and as you get comfortable with that approach with the back of your tongue, ka ka ka, you can apply that to scales and simple exercises that you'd often use. I like to use scales. I also like to use the Clark number two exercise in the Clark book. I'll show you what I'm talking about. One important thing to remember as you practice this or any other tonguing exercise is it all really starts with a consistent, steady airstream. As long as you're keeping that airstream consistent, it's going to make your life a lot easier as you teach your tongue how to skip over that airstream to create these different articulations. All right, once you're getting comfortable articulating those notes with the back of your tongue, the ka sound, now it's time to include the single tongue, the ta sound, in order to alternate between those to really get that double tonguing approach. So, as you go, you're going to put the horn on your face, ta ka ta ka ta ka ta ka Take it slow at first, really try to make that ka sound sound the same as the ta approach. At this point, it'll be a big help to employ our good friend, the metronome. With any tonguing technique, it's very important that as you practice, you try to be able to subdivide the time and really try to get your articulations right in time. You want to really teach your muscles how to operate within a specific time frame. And in doing so, you'll find that as you continuously turn the metronome up to higher beats per minute, you will be able to continuously improve your tonguing speed and accuracy. All right, I'm going to start at 80 BPMs, and I'm really going to try to get those notes right on time. So we're going to start with 8 notes, then move to 16th notes, and then move to 32nd notes, all the while subdividing in my head and really listening to that metronome, trying to feel that time internally. You should always remember to start at whatever tempo is comfortable for you and allows you to really fine tune the rhythm and really make sure that you're right in time. 
In starting slow and moving your way gradually up, you're gonna find that you're teaching your muscles how to operate in time, and very quickly you'll be able to bring the metronome tempos up and really be able to fine tune the speed and clarity of your articulation using the double tonguing technique. Once you get comfortable with the double tonguing technique, triple tonguing is only one small step away. Rather than alternating between ta and ka, now you're gonna double up on the ta sound to create more of a triplet approach, either with ta ta ka ta ta ka or ta ka ta ta ka ta. Now that'll sound a little bit more like this. Or now one or the other may be more comfortable for you, but it's often very useful to practice both ways because different situations may call for different approaches to the triple tonguing technique. With either double tonguing or triple tonguing, you can apply this technique to some of the simpler exercises that you use or your scales in order to really practice these kinds of articulations in a musical setting. I'll often play through the double tonguing and triple tonguing approach using my scales or oftentimes the Clark exercises and any other uh, musical exercise that I might have in order to really apply these articulations to a more musical setting. Let me give you an example. Now once you really get comfortable creating that sound with the ka sound and alternating between the ta and the ka, the most important things to remember are to be able to maintain that consistent airstream and to really allow your tongue to skip over the airstream freely. The other one is really to remember to be able to practice these articulations in time. Being able to play this stuff with rhythmic accuracy is going to teach your muscles how to operate in time. It's going to make your life much easier as you go. You'll find as you get comfortable with these techniques that you can apply them to many different styles of music. Uh, double and triple tonguing are very common in classical music and marches in order to create a very fast and clear articulation. And uh, you'll even hear it very often in jazz music. Uh, in particular, I think of Lee Morgan's solo on the famous Art Blakey recording, Monin, in which he uses uh, double tonguing and triple tonguing techniques for a great rhythmic effect. I've also heard that uh, Woody Shaw used to use triple tonguing in order to navigate some of his more challenging angular lines. So maybe if you're listening real close to Woody Shaw's music, you'll be able to catch a double or triple tongue here or there. I often like to use double and triple tonguing in certain circumstances such as challenging bebop heads where sometimes moving around into the different registers will give you a hard time. Sometimes you can sneak a little double or triple tongue in there in order to uh, facilitate your articulation and make some of those lines a little bit easier to play. I'll give you a quick example. All right, there you have it, the technique of double and triple tonguing on trumpet. Hope this video helps in your quest for articulation excellence, and I hope you have a great time using some of these techniques in your own playing. All right, gang, happy practicing, and we'll see you next time. All right, folks, thanks so much for checking out this video. If you found it useful or informative or just entertaining, be sure to give us a like, subscribe to the channel, Leave a comment if you got any questions or if this video helped you out, or be sure to send it along to any of your trumpet playing friends. We're currently offering lessons online, and you can visit our website at www.ridgewoodschoolofmusic.com. We're also offering lessons in person in the Brooklyn, Queens, and greater New York City area. Be sure to send us a message and we'll get back to you just as soon as we can. You can also follow me, Bobby Spellman, on Instagram at, at Bob Spellman, on Facebook at Bobby Spellman Music, or on Twitter at Bobby Spellman for some more trumpet fun. <laughs> Lastly, if you found this video useful and you'd like to give a little donation to the cause, you can find us on Venmo at Ridgewood Music. All tips will go to the creation of more videos like this one, and we really appreciate it. Thanks a lot, gang. We'll see you on the next one, and happy practicing.